Hello and welcome to the Mindful Making Video Podcast. This is episode number 39 and if you are here for yarn and knitting, relaxing content, you are in the right place. My name is Jane and you've landed here in my craft room, Hornsby Heights, north of Sydney. So Mindful Making is a podcast about, yes, yarn and knitting, because knitting is my way of relaxing, 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 um, recharging, and that's how I feel grounded. So basically, knitting is my mindfulness practice. Before we jump into the knitting content, I would like to formally acknowledge a country, I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm recording from today. I am on Darek Kurengai land. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome and happy Easter. Today it is Easter Sunday 2022. It is the 17th of April, beautiful day out there. Here in Australia or Sydney, we have 23, 24 degrees, beautiful sunshine and a few clouds in between. An amazing day. <clears throat> uh, we were supposed to uh, go to church, but sadly the COVID monster stroke again. So the sermon and the lunch at the Danish church was cancelled today. But that means I got extra time to sit and chat with you. I hope you have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea and for sure your project ready and that we can knit, make, crochet, every, anything um, together for the next 30 45 minutes or so. I have a cup of coffee and uh, actually uh, there, there's just <clears throat> a tiny bit left and I had to reheat it because as many podcasters do and I know that my good friend in Denmark Tina just did in Badesro, I did record the entire podcast if, um, but without the microphone on. So I hope this time it all works. So I reheated my coffee and let's just do it all again. Um, I'm not wearing any knit yet, but I thought I, I, I wanted to wear, but it's actually too warm. Uh, just the Solidago shawl, um, that was a pattern I released last year. It is a triangular shawl made up of sections with lace and then um, intersected by stuck in it and garter rich sections and it's in it and then sorry finished off with this beautiful border lace border. It's a beautiful, soft, squishy yarn, and it is, uh, let me just check my notes, because I had to find it again. It is called Blackbird Fingering Weight, and it's from um, Pirate Pearl Yarns in her collar called Honey. It's a 90% Pullworth wool and 10% silk. Yes, and um, it's just a lovely shawl having around the neck or the shoulders on a cold evening or an afternoon or just as a bit of an accessory when you're podcasting and it's Easter and uh, you have to find something yellow. So this is, this is my type of yellow just for today. There we go, but it's a bit too warm to wear, so I'll take it off again. 
You can find more about Solidago uh, and everything that I talk about in this podcast today. You can find it on my website, which is called mindfulmaking.com.au. For uh, there, you can find yes, the pattern for the Solidago, but you can also find show notes um, describing what I talk about in the pos- this podcast today. And there is a link in the description box below. Do, do, do. A lot of uh, this way, that way. <laughs> Just saying, I have done this podcast once. Um, hopefully, there will be less rambling this time. I haven't started well, haven't I? Anyway. Welcome if you are a new viewer and just found your way here to my little corner of the internet. If you're returning, welcome back. It's great to have you here again. I know that there is, there are a lot of you that are coming back again and again and I love it. I love it and I love your comments. So please um, continue to let them come. and you can just put in a comment down below and um, it's super cool to interact with you that's the that's the joys of this community that we build around our craft and our hobby with yarn and needles and spanning the entire world it's absolutely amazing um welcome to jer i Denmark det er påske og glædelig påske til jer. I har en lang ferie. Vi har kun fire dage. So just saying hello to my Danish friends. Um, they, as one of the only countries, I don't know whether it's only country in the world, but they have five days of break over Easter, where we, for instance, here in Australia, have just four, the Friday and the Monday off. Good Friday and... Um, what is the Monday called? Anyway, what you can expect of today's episode um, is two finished objects and one new project on the needle. I w- uh, well, you will also see um, some footage from a yarn festival uh, I participated in in back in March, and then. Um, you can come on a trip to Lithgow in the Blue Mountains together with me and my, and my youngest son. Uh, that will be towards the end of this episode. So welcome, sit back, enjoy, relax, and let's jump in to the first finished object. The first finished object is the Scrabby Strieber designed by Pia of 50 Fabulous. So here it is. Beautiful stripes um, and the entire jumper just made out of leftover yarn in colors of blue, uh, nude pink, brown, yellowy, Hand dyed um, some uh, coast yarn from Holst, and the this actually this pale pink is um, avocado dyed yarn that I did a few years back. Beautiful project, easy knit. I didn't do any modifications. At least that wasn't the intention. But I couldn't get the gauge that the pattern asks for. So it is knit up in a in fingering weight yarn, yarns, um, and the gauge said uh, 20 stitches per 10 centimeters. I have 25 stitches. Um, and I didn't swatch apart from this big swatch here. 
the pattern is designed to be um, sort of loosely fitted. This is uh, not so loose fit, so it's actually a quite tight fit with, of course, when you have 25% more stitches per 10 centimeters, the garment will shrink when you don't um, adjust with adding stitch numbers. And I didn't go up a size, I made my usual size. This is um, her size three. It was supposed to be a, I think, 42, 44 inch bust. Um, I don't know what it is now. I haven't measured it, but um, I'm just saying that it's quite body tight and I have blocked it pretty um, heavily, drastically. It probably can do a bit more stretchiness and maybe with wear it will stretch out. I don't know how much I will use it. That's the only thing. One day I will wear it for you guys so you can see it on. And um, <laughs> yes, well, um, lessons learned people, gauge watching is nice. But I can highly recommend the pattern Scrabby Strieber by 50 Fabulous. Um, you can find the pattern on Ravelry or on her website, which is also called Fabulous, 50 Fabulous. And she also have a podcast um, and she records episodes in Danish and in English. So she is a Danish lady. I uh, highly recommend to follow, um, follow her and check her out. I used, what did I say now? I, I have to check, I think it's 880 meter of yarn for this tea. Yeah, it weighs 220 grams, um, so 880 meters. Size three, four point uh, four millimeter needles. Gaze twenty five stitches. Yep. Started fifth of uh, March and finished nineteenth of March. So a very quick project. The second finished object is a jumper for my husband. He has for a long time been asking and asking and asking again for um, that I should knit him a bit jumper. He's very knit worthy. He um, uses an up so, you know, it's all get holes everywhere where his uh, purse is in the back pocket. So uh, very knit worthy and he appreciates a good woolen jumper. So that was uh, just to keep peace and quiet um, at home. I thought it better better give him <laughs> and his jumper a bit of attention. So I knit him a dark blue, very simple stock in it jumper. It's a saddle shoulder construction. Let me see if I can show you here. So you have the sleeves are knitted, the sleeves are knitted bottom up, and then you have um, a. Let's see if it's if you can see this. So you have this um, band that run across the shoulders, and when you look at it. Here, you have the sleeves running up and then you have this uh, line through here. So it fits very well around the shoulders. There's room for his shoulder here. Uh, fits him very well. The only problem though is the, uh, the neck line. And you might be able to see that it looks strange. It does look strange. So, 
what I need to do is to rip the back the neck the ribbing and then redo the final piece on this saddle shoulder I don't know whether you can see but it ends up with a triangle down here and I thought to sew on the straight line to the back and then having this angle sitting to you know just shape around the neck probably not right if or oh, it doesn't look right uh, in the pattern there were no descriptions and no you know guidance for how to sew it together it just said well put the pieces together sew them together so this was my um, best try it doesn't sit correctly it doesn't fit in around the neck here and it sort of pulls in this corner here and it looks like that it's it's turned back to front so it's uh, that the neckline just scoops up in front so I will have to rip back and then redo this section this triangle up here <sighs> If you can see that yeah so I will need to do that I have um, spent the nights trying to figure out how to do it uh, I will keep you posted hopefully next time I will show you a perfectly fitting neckline on this jumper otherwise lovely project knitting in the round and um, I knit the, the back and front together so in the round splitting for sleeves and knit it flat and then you do a front and a back they are the same and then the sleeves I did them two at a time love two at a time sleeves and socks um, and then leaf cap shaping and then the final band that goes up here on the shoulder and then seaming it all together that was probably the hardest part but anyway um yeah the yarn is super soft it's yeah it's called super soft it's from Holzgarn, and the color is vintage heather you know the camera might blow out because of the light but the color is a sort of a mix of black and dark blue it's beautiful it is really really beautiful when knitting with this yarn so the Holtzgarn and the super soft has a very attractive price point um, but it's also because one process is skipped so the final washing out of spinning oil so there is a um, a bit of leftover spinning oil and in a dark colored yarn like this there was a lot of excess color so my hands were blue and i basically had a um, almost permanent tattoo across my index finger here where the yarn runs when I knit uh, for three four weeks um, yeah they were blue as I said there was a lot of excess color and I will just show you how it looked when I washed this jumper
Yeah, so pay attention. Uh, dark colors can bleed. If you are, for instance, doing color work, I would highly recommend just to pre-wash the yarn before you start mixing it with, let's say, a lighter color. Um, based on this experience. The final product though is amazing and uh, with that wash I think I've uh, most of the excess color is gone. So my husband can safely wear it also in rain but I will however recommend him to wear a darker t-shirt underneath just for the first wear. Otherwise, I will have blue stripes on a white t-shirt. But the uh, second finished objects. Let me just give you some of the, um, the details of sizing, etc. So it is the, uh, the size is a 44 inch chest measurement. So 44 inches. Uh, around. I knitted this, I think, I, I, I have written here 3.25, I think that's right, and a 2.75 for the ribbing. 25 stitches, 10 centimeters. The garment weighs 276 gram. It's a woolen spun yarn, so it's, it's very light and super warm and very uh, comfortable to wear and it regulates temperature very well. So it, you have, I've knitted up 1585 meters of yarn. It is, you might say, you know, what pattern is it Jane? Well it is called the Base Ball Jersey designed by Bruce Vine Weinstein and it's published in a book called called Knits Meant Want and I'll see if I can insert a picture up here of uh, the front of that book. I've borrowed it on the library so I don't have it here with me. Started this project on the 20th of March and finished it just a few days ago so the 15th of April. I uh, loved knitting this project. Next time though, uh, when doing a saddle shoulder, that's not the last time I've done that construction, but I will try to do it top down and have it knitted out instead of, instead of uh, sewing the parts together. That was cumbersome. But um, yeah, you know, good podcast in the ears or watching a, one of you guys knitting. Um, all good. Second finished object. Moving on to what is on my needles because my husband's jumper just finished the day before yesterday so I had to start a new project. I have long been wanting to uh, make more summer tops and although that here in Australia we are in autumn, you might say isn't that a bit sort of out of sync uh, knitting summer tops, yes, but I'm going to Denmark in July and hopefully it will be, you know, beautiful, warm summer weather so I can wear a few hand knitted uh, summer tops. Uh, and a few episodes back, I it's probably from January, I would assume December, January, and um, I talked about summer tops and I've created a bundle which is, you know, just a you know group of um, patterns that I've favorited and put them together in a bundle called Summer Tops. And if you're interested to look through what I have been looking at uh, and been interesting in, interested in, uh, you can find that bundle on Mindful Making AU on Ravelry. And when we are with that, I am Mindful Making on Instagram, if you would like to follow me there. I am a working in, let's start with a yarn, in this beautiful yarn. Everything about, information about the yarn is gone. I don't know what it is. It is a cone that I bought a few years back at Garnoset. 
dk and often they have these um you know spot sales uh, and this was one of them i do remember though that it was a uh, luxurious yarn and i suspect with the sheen that there is a great deal of silk in it as far as i remember there was also some cashmere Well, it's lovely, uh, it's drapey, um, soft. I wonder if it could be cotton or linen as well. well. Anyway, I don't know, so I can't tell you anything more than beautiful. <laughs> oh, and I've lost any um, labels or anything, so, but what I am working on, and now I am, of course, in the middle of a row. It is the Stable Linen Top, and it's a design by Hoki Locatelli. It is, I will put up a picture of it here. So a, a sleeveless top with this little pattern, patterning on front and on back, on the back. Very simple structure, very um, effectful if you can say that. And I am, this is actually the back, and now I'm, I've just gathered and um, cast it on for the front. Here. I think it knits up beautifully. It's a bit uneven, but I am sure it will even out when it's washed. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy so far. I love the yarn and I can all already see a um, an additional summer top, a much sort of wide um, roomy top coming on. It drapes beautifully. Yeah. So the stable linen top by Hoki Locatelli. And that's basically it of um, works in progress. I usually work on one project, max two, and tops of three at a time. I like just having one projects to focus on and then I just knit knit knit. It doesn't ma really, well it do matter, but not significantly matter what I'm working on, just that I can knit. So those were the knitting projects that um, is ongoing at the moment, but before we uh, move on to non-knitting related, there is just uh, two things I just want to say, and that is, um, well, usually in these podcasts I just say how much I've been knitting the last month, and let me just check for March. So two finished objects. It was two tops vests and I've knitted 1,795 meters of yarn and the two finished objects are in March the Scrabby Strieber and then and then the gum knot tea that I showed you last time. The pattern is still um, being written up. I have had a lot of, well, it's been a busy time at work, so I haven't had the time to finish it yet. But now it's been washed. And uh, the main yarn here is a merino bamboo blend. Uh, you can go back to the previous episode and you can hear more about it. And when I have something more to tell you as well about the pattern, I will come back to it and uh, tell you much more about this. So those were the two finished objects um, for March. For April then, 
my husband's jumper will go into the um, yeah this list and hopefully the um, top will also be finished during this month month let's see one thing that is also a work in progress is a test that is currently running so the test for what was previously called the summer breeze tea is running you have seen this t-shirt before It is knit up in lace weight uh, and um, this beautiful blend is a super luxurious yarn. It's a um, merino and a, so 55 merino, 45 silk. And the, the color is just beautiful. It's called African Daisy and it's from a hand dyer local here in Sydney um, called Glen, Glen Heaven Knits. The test is running and in the, on the mailing list, for um, which you can subscribe to on my website. If you are interested, that's where I um, post the test calls uh, I send out here during, well, it's only a couple of days ago, asking for testers and um, some of the sizes are full, but I, I, I am still looking for testers for size, what I in the pattern call uh, number four, size four, six and seven. Of those, so this is what the pattern will uh, look like when, well, hopefully in color, when it get published. And um, size four is a 115 centimeter bust, size six, 135, size seven, 145. And that in um, inches are 45, 53 and 57. If you're interested in testing the, the summer tea, please send me an email uh, with your email address and you can send it to hello at mindfulmaking.com.au and I will uh, send more information to you and you can make up, you can then finally decide whether it suits you to participate. So I did say that it previously called summer breeze tea because uh, this has been in the making for a long time and in that time somebody else found and um, you know um, loved that name as well and uh, have published a pattern called summer breeze tea so i need to find a new name any suggestions comments below um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe a giveaway thing? Of course, put down any suggestions for what that previously called Summer Breeze Tea should now be named in the comments below. If um, your suggestion is selected, of course you will get the pattern for free. Those were the news or status or information about the knitting part now now let uh, let me take you to a yarn festival i went to the 20th of march it was actually a uh, you know a substitute event or a rescue event because fiberfest which is a last yeah large yarn festival here in new south wales were scheduled for that day, the 20th of March, but it had to be cancelled due to the grounds being too wet and it wasn't safe to have uh, vans, people, um, you know, on the grounds where it was supposed to be, so it got cancelled. But within a week, a um, sort of a smaller pop-up festival was arranged and it was called the Coastal 
let me just see. I remember, I forget the name. It was called the Coastal Fibre Pop-Up. Uh, and a group of lovely uh, friends, uh, went. we went together on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. So um, you are invited for a bit of yarn uh, heaven and uh, a lovely lunch with knitting and chatting. Festival, I did buy a few skeins of yarn. Let me show you what I got. I got these two skeins. They are a, a undyed yarn and it is an 85% merino and 15% Donegal net. Uh, and what I love about this yarn is that it's undyed. It's the natural colored of the sheep. Um, that has been, sp the wool that's been spun into these skeins. And let me just show you again the small, it's not speckles, but just a small Something starts in natural color, black, brown, darker, gray. So I thought just by itself without any dye, it just looks spectacular. Got two of these, run 400 meters per 100 gram. What they will become? maybe as an effect in stripes or maybe on its own in a full jumper or a tee would be beautiful don't know they sit up here on the shelf for now as part of the uh, decorations in this room well i got a bit more <laughs> it does look a bit messy but it's um it's, it was, it, 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 Quite, they are soft and slippery. These are again an undyed base. And if they look soft and squishy, they are even squishier, softer in real uh, life here. It's, I haven't, I haven't felt anything like it. The blend is 70% grey baby alpaca, 20% silk and 10% cashmere. No wonder it is um, slick, slip, slippery, sort of um, slippery, I don't know, um, and deliciously soft. Mm. And again, an undyed base. And let me see if I can control this so you can see it close up.
So it's just the it's sort of like a almost yeah twist between light grey and a bit of white in it. It's so stunningly beautiful in itself, just as an undyed base. Finally, I also uh, thought to share what I've been obsessed about lately. And um, last two episodes I've talked about Les Phone, and I won't bother you with that this, this time around. Um, but lately I've just been hooked into uh, gut, our you know stomach food, gut health, uh, microbiome, um, and the impact of our food and that system, and how it um, impacts brain, mood, disease, everything. So I have listened to a podcast series called The Shift, and it's by Catherine Maslin. Uh, it's uh, nerdy, it's in English, and it's uh, talk to 25 experts within sort of uh, gastro, uh, micro, um, microorganisms, bacteria, microbiome, um, gut disease, gut health experts, so 25 experts, and uh, put it together in a series of podcasts called The Shift. I think I've listened to 80-something podcasts when I've been out walking, uh, and I've really enjoyed it. Not that I have m made major changes to what I eat, my diet and stuff, but a huge awareness of what we, you know, what enters here has impact not only for the tube that is our, you know, internal... Uh, intestines and intestines and uh, you know the gut system but also um, our entire body I find it fascinating so if you are keen to listen to some high quality um, health education about the gut and um, gut health microbiome etc I can highly recommend that podcast series and then, uh, talking about podcasts, uh, I mentioned 50 Fabulous of a Knitting Podcast. Another one that I want to recommend and give a shout out is the Taylor Made Podcast. It's an Australian maker, star, she, um, it's Sarah, Sarah Taylor. Started knitting a year ago, beautiful soul, beautiful um, messaging about environment she is much more environmentally conscious than I am um, and living off-grid so trying to you know reduce the footprint on on sort of climate footprint and on the environment just a beautiful beautiful soul so uh, check her out she has the podcast called TaylorMade she is on Instagram she is called Sarah Taylor Mate. So uh, give her a a follow and check her out. Um, finally, and the um, sort of well, of course, before I end, just a shout out to my own website if you want to uh, know more about uh, what I'm up to and just follow along. Um, check out my website mindfulmaking.com.au and if you wish sign up for the mailing list and you will hear when podcasts are out when test calls when there are calls for tests um, and other bits and pieces and if you like this podcast well you f feel free to subscribe and hit like send me a comment I love 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 your comments so keep them coming uh, and finally, I will take you on a trip to Lithgow in the Blue Mountains. Uh, I drove there with my son, my younger son, for his driver's test. Uh, you can check out this little video to see if he passed or not. 
in any case, it was a beautiful trip. And with that, I will say Happy Easter. Enjoy the break. I hope you are safe and well, and see you again next time. Bye-bye.